Okay, we are right now at this very moment. You missed it, by the way. It was uh, last Tuesday. But we're going to bring you some of the fun, some of the enjoyment of um, a unique fundraiser for the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum uh, right here in downtown Joliet. And it's called Cruising on 66 Car Show, put on by the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum, Ron Romero, president, and uh, Debbie Jo Erickson, who is the vice president. And I uh, wish you were here. You're going to see some fabulous cars. And uh, look at this here. We have a man with a trophy, Tim Ivey. Welcome to Joliet. Thank you. Welcome. Good to be here. Well, how'd you get this trophy? How uh, the Shanahan Cars, the Three Rivers Festival yesterday. Oh, great, great, great. And that's Three Rivers, third place. No, uh, this second is place. second place. Second place. The, the, the biggest guy we talked to has got third place, yeah, right? right? All right. right. Yep. So tell me about your car. We'll step back here a little it's bit. A, it's a 2003 uh, Chevy Corvette 50th anniversary car. Wow. Yeah, it's a pretty nice car. I've only had it about a month, but I'm excited. A month? Yeah, excited to have it, though. Yeah. Now, how many of these have you had? That's my first Corvette. Really? I've had a lot of uh, Mustangs, GTs, and but it's my first Corvette. So. so what made you make that decision? Just fate, I think, because yeah. I ran into it. I said, man, I love the car. And just put mine up for sale and bought this one. Just, <laughs> That's just great. Like that. now, uh, you go to many of these car shows on a weekly basis? Yeah, I usually go to about three a week. Really? All summer long. Are you a retired guy? Yep, retired. Retired yeah. Teamster. You know, you look awful young for yeah. being retired, but that's okay. That we right. thank you for yep. the Teamster. And what'd you work out of? Uh, 179 in Joliet. I worked for Deconstruction for the last 10 years. Wow. That's a little company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're going to continue. We're going to leave Tim and uh, travel on to another trophy winner in just a second. So stay right where you're at. All right, as I mentioned, we're gonna see as many of these cars and these drivers and owners as we possibly can here in downtown Joliet. Uh, a fundraiser for the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. And as we speak, you're gonna hear cars coming in because we've got a ton of cars showing up here in downtown Joliet. And um, Tim, uh, not Tim, that was um, Bill Boyd. I almost got you mixed up with Dick Boyd, but Bill Boyd, uh, welcome. And uh, you also have a trophy. Tell me about that trophy. I won it at Shanahan, uh, same place my buddy won his. Okay. And how, how do you win these things? They just look at your car and check it all out. And, it, and it looked pretty good, trophy, right? Yeah. yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. And uh, that's a great, uh, not only car show, but it's a great festival at Three oh, Rivers. Yeah. Shanahan does a great job with that. Oh, yeah, it was really nice. So tell me, come on back here a little bit. Tell me about your car. Uh, it's a 98, 98 Ford uh, Mustang Cobra. Yeah, we want all the people to see your smiling face. So you have to turn around a little bit here. There you go. <laughs> it's a 98 Ford Mustang Cobra. Okay. Uh, 82,000 miles on it. Wow. Runs and drives like brand new. Now your buddy, Tim, he left the Ford in now into this uh, little thing called a Corvette. Yeah, that's strange because I had a Corvette just like this, had flames on it, and he had a Mustang. He sold his Mustang and bought the Corvette. I sold the Corvette and bought a Mustang. <laughs> that's great. How many of these things do you do, oh, let's say, for a week? I can, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. What? do a lot of them in the summertime. Yeah. So it, in addition to showing the car and displaying the car and seeing the other cars, what is the other Kind of important thing for you for these car shows. You meet a lot of nice people, yeah. you know. You meet a lot of great people and share it, you know, interesting yeah. cars and yeah. stuff. That's cool. I like it. Something to do anyway. I when wanna... you get old, you don't have a whole lot to do anyway. <laughs> well, you're not old. Here, here's the deal. I want to share a little history with you people. Some of you folks out there will know the name of this company that he worked for 20 years with, and that was Lennon Wallpaper. Yeah. And Joliet. Juliet, that was the factory close to. Well, was it was it before I-80 or? It was uh, actually almost right under 80. Yeah. Wow. So, so that, that's a great company, a good Juliet name, yeah. and we thank you for sharing your both your oh, car you. and your story. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to continue. Are we all set now because we've got another interesting man to talk to here. This is uh, Bill Weaver, and Bill comes to us originally from Alabama. Uh, and you, you might be able to recognize a little bit of the accent there with, with Bill. But however, Bill is holding up a, 
uh, something he's very proud of about his car and uh, the Ford Performance Group. So what is so special about this car? Well, it's number 351 of 1,253 built like this car in 2007. And uh, it, it's got the hot rod motor, the five speed. We love it. We <laughs> love it. It goes goes good with the other seven I got. You have seven. Are they all uh, Ford products? No, no. I got the Chevrolet's, two. I got a one Pontiac. I got a 35 Ford, uh, 51 Chevy, two-door hard top, a 56 Ford truck, uh, a smoke in the bandit car, uh, on and on and on. So when did you win the lottery? I didn't. <laughs> I worked hard. You worked hard. Uh, what, were, what were you doing? I was in the RV business. I, uh, I was a factory rep for a, uh -huh. for an RV company in Indiana, and it paid well. Yeah. Paid well. You know, Indiana is known as the RV capital. They truly the are. Lord, Indiana is the you car, is you capital bet. of the world. Yep. You, bet. you can see as you drive by, you see enough RVs as far as the eye can see. Thank you, sir. Let me step back here a little bit so we can see this car. And it's a beauty. And can you tell me a little bit more about the car? What, what do you want to know? It's it's powered by a special special V8 motor and uh, just like the white one, and and it's just a running. It's a race car on wheels. I mean, it's, you <laughs> you can go out and have fun. Who rides with you? Uh, Anybody? Sometimes, sometimes Billy, sometimes my dog. <laughs> and that's it. I don't. Uh, most people don't want to ride with me. I got you. I got you. Well, listen. Enjoy yourself tonight. Sixty mile an hour is too fast for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I think it would well, be. You'll ride when we get when you get through today. You can get in. I'll take you ride yeah. at any speed you want to go. And we'll have this guy who's doing the camera work bail us out, right? Well, if we get in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't plan on catching us. Thank you. Hey, God thank you very much. God thank bless you. you. Take God bless care. you, cameraman. Well, Brian Meyer traveled all the way from Juliet, Illinois, to be with us this afternoon. Uh, welcome, by the way. And thank you for coming for the fundraiser for the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. Soon to open up in September. And the Hall of Fame. Uh, we'll get a shot of the Rialto Theater across the street. August 31st, the big show. Uh, the Hall of Fame. All of our great artists, musicians, DJs, radio producers, writers will all be at stage on August 31st for collecting their awards and accolades for just uh, bringing us the entertainment and the fun and great music, uh, the music that really is music <laughs> to enjoy. All right, so we've got Brian, and uh, tell me about your car. Uh, it's a 1968 Chevelle Malibu. It has a 569 uh, with a 700 R4 and a 79 Trans Am uh, shaker assembly grafted into the hood and the paint is uh, PPG Monarch Orange. Wow. Now, what made you, why this car? Uh, this is the first car I ever owned. Uh, it didn't look like this obviously. It was uh, that ugly uh, baby poo green with a black vinyl top and uh, green interior. Uh, it was a numbers matching car but uh, sadly I blew the motor up so it no longer uh, uh, stayed numbers matching after that. Well, I know well enough that you did not buy this in 1968 because you're way too young for that. Oh, no. Way too young. No, I got it in 94. This car is originally an Illinois car. Uh, I bought it. I'm the third owner, uh, uh, but the uh, I bought it from the son-in-law of the original owner out in Kirkland, Washington. Wow. Well, it's a beauty. And... Um, I asked this question a couple of times before, and it's just interesting to me. Aside from looking at the cars and showcasing your car, why do you why do you come to car shows? I don't know. It's kind of grew up around them. So uh, actually, my family members are here. Uh, my they've always been hot rodders, always building cars, and it was always something that we did as extracurricular activities. If you didn't do sports, you were in the garage working yeah, on sure. go-karts, dirt bikes, and hot rods. Well, on our next show, we'll talk about your dirt bike career. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was short-lived. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. We're going to continue. Here is a gentleman who's helped me out through the years at different events that I've had down here. Uh, when we had uh, Nitro Night, we had uh, Race Fan Rally, and, um, well, I can't kind of think of a very first one was called... Uh, 
I don't know. We got sued because it was belonging to somebody else's yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. But anyway, there's a little club that uh, this gentleman is uh, the head honcho for, and it's called Rusty Nuts Car Club. Rusty Nuts Car Club. And uh, this guy is anything but rusty. Uh, Dave Grossclock and uh, David, what kind of company do you run? What kind of company do I run? Yeah. I don't run a company. I'm retired. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me all about the club. Uh, we're a, we just turned 82 members. Um, we got them from Joliet, Lockport, Plainfield, Shanahan, Manuka, Serena, uh, Braidwood, Ottawa, Naperville. Got uh, members from all over the area. Uh, we're a charity club. We give back. Uh, we just did the Catfish Day show in Wilmington. We put that car show on. Uh, this is our third year. And all the proceeds go to charities. Uh, we give to Kuzma Cottage down there. It's a food, uh, it's like a food bank down there. I understand they feed 1,600 people a month. So we, uh, we make a nice donation to them. Uh, we are also going to uh, donate this year to the Brain Tumors uh, Fund. One of our good friends who helped support us this year uh, is in charge of that, and he had to cancel the show this year. Um, Rich Haight, and he puts that on. It used to be held at uh, um, Texas Roadhouse, and they moved it to uh, Stone City, and he had to cancel this year due to a family illness. And uh, he donated all, all his stuff to us so we could, um, you know, use it for raffle items and, and give it all out. And uh, so we're going to make a nice donation to the Brain Tumor Fund this year also. And you are actually, I don't think tonight would have taken place without you working with Ron Romero from the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. But the uh, cars are paying, I don't know, it was $10 or something to come on in. And all of that will be given to the museum. And I'm very grateful for that. The Illinois uh, Rock and Roll Museum will be opening up in September. And uh, there'll be something around 200 students. So there's, a, there's another aspect to that museum. And that's a teaching and education for young inspiring musicians and uh, I believe the teachers from Julia Junior College are going to be teaching over there right. and the studios are being built as we speak and so the stage is ready the museum is almost ready we're looking forward to an opening in September now tell me about your car the 1964 Chevelle well, Malibu don't turn your back on the don't camera turn never back. turn your back on the camera <laughs> I'm a rookie first time a first timer uh, it's a 1964 Chevelle Malibu um, it's my devil in my heart as I named it um, I, uh, I named it after the Beatles it's a 1964 and that's when the Beatles ah, came around yep. and uh, they uh, they also had a, one of their hits was she's got the devil in her heart so I had the car as red chili pepper red and I figured oh, I'll put some horns on it here and there and I'll call it the devil in your heart and uh, so that's how it got named um, just finished a big engine uh, rebuild on it and install. Uh, made everything chrome, nice and shiny under there. So uh, while I'm retired, I got something to do all day and get out of mama's hair. And uh, I clean it, and there it is. Um, now, let me think. Would you call that car a Chevelle? Yes. Oh, this okay. It's a Chevelle. It's a Chevelle Malibu. And um, they had the Chevelle SS also, and they had a 300 series, which is the four, a four-door and uh, family car so yeah it's uh this is the two-door sedan and uh, the new motor in it i just put a 355 uh, 390 horsepower blueprint motor in it and uh, i gotta thank hot rod house of power new lennox jerry robb he uh guy's a magician when it comes to cars so he did all the work for me and uh, i paid for it <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for all you do, all the all the car shows you attend, and the charity uh, portion of your of your club. When did it start? Did you tell me that? Um, our club has been going on for about five or six years now. Okay. Um, we first started out. We had some problems in the beginning, and then they got ironed out, and we moved forward. Good. Um, we're rolling now. Like I said, we got 82 members in it, uh, and a lot. Of, there's a lot of rusty nuts here tonight. Um, it certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, that's a car club, not a condition. Okay. <laughs> We're going to continue. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, you've heard about the Brown family. 
Here is James Brown in person appearing here in Joliet with us on Channel 6. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. And also a member of the Rusty Nuts Car Club. And uh, you have something really special here. Most, yeah, maybe two or three other trucks, but most of them are vehicles of uh, different brands, models, shapes, sizes, and years. Tell me about yours. Mine is a 1970 C10 truck. Uh, it's a long bed. Uh, everybody wants to try to build a short bed truck. I try to make a long bed look good. So I hope I succeeded. I, indeed, you have succeeded. Tell me about the engine. What kind of engine the you engine got? The engine is a 383 uh, stroker. I had a 350 in it, but it was giving me a little trouble. So I had a build, uh, engine build, and I put the um, Soper and Dennis Soper and his son Jason put the motor in for me. Got it running. You don't leave me at the light no more. I don't watch you take off. I, I, I give you a good run for your money. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you, you originally worked at Discount Tire, but now you're at Retire? No, I'm retired, yes. <laughs> Didn't think I'd catch you there. No, uh, I think you would. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're uh, very great, welcome. beautiful car. Thank and uh, we'll take a closer look. And, uh, well, let's do that right now. All right, music in the background. Things are beginning to happen here. I see the Bluesmobile has arrived on the scene uh, with uh, satchel and handcuffs. So we'll get a closer look at that in a minute. Right now, we've got. Uh, Ron Blazevic with us today with the uh, the Blazer. Is that the Blazer? Yeah, the, yeah, the Blade, the 67 442 Oldsmobile. And tell me more about that. Well, we're going to get a close up of it, but tell me what we're looking at. Well, that's the original motor with the tri power, and uh, I chromed it up pretty much, you know. Yeah, you did. Cleaned it, smoothened the firewall, everything, so a little bit modified. Are you one of these retired guys too? Oh, yeah. You are? Yeah. IBEW, local 176 for 38 years. Yeah, wow. Great. Electrician. Great. So, so, yeah. Great. I could tell by your your electrifying personality. You think so? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, do you belong to a car club? Coachman Car Club. I'm the president of Coachman Car Club. we got about 35 members. Great. Yeah. Where, where, where are you out of? Well, it started down in Cold City, but it's Morris, Cold City, Joliet, Elwood, you know. Where do you call home? Minooka. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Cold City. No, Minooka, Illinois. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Good. Now, um, everyone who I've talked to has at least attended about three car shows a week. Is that pretty much average for you, or do you do more or less? Yeah, about right. Cruise nights. Uh, I usually go to Lockport and Tuesday night Plainfield, but I came down here. And Wednesday we go to VFW, Stone City, and we hit a car show on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. So we move around. We, we like showing it off, driving well, it. It's, so, it's well worth showing off. Yeah. It's great. I bought, I bought that car new and I got back from Vietnam. I got wow. back in November of 66 and I bought this in 67. Two things. Yeah. Thank, thank God you came back and thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you. Thank Take you care. Thank you. Take care. So. And we have John Cooling with me right now, and actually, because I'm interviewing John Cooling, we just got a nice cool breeze just came mm -hmm. through the parking lot. First time all evening long. John, is, nice. yeah. Wood Brothers 21, tell, what is that all about? Oh, it's a NASCAR team. It uh, is. Yeah, Matt DiBenedetto. Yeah, it is. I'm a big fan. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a whole different subject. We like to talk about why they left Chicagoland. But anyway, let's talk about the TE309. This red mobile you got here, tell me about it. This is our 70 Nova. It was actually my wife's father's last drag car before he passed away. And uh, it went about the roads for a while and we found it and got it back and turned it into a street car. And we use it for cruise nights and car shows and things like that now. It's a very special car to us because her dad owned it for a long time. Yeah, and, and it, it is interesting, he says, it's now a street car. I'm going to ask him about his engine in about two seconds here. <laughs> and then we'll see if it's still a drag car or a street car. And for the CPD, the JPD, it's a street car. It's a street car. Tell me about that engine. It's right behind me. And we'll it's, get a close look at it. It's got a 427 uh, Chevy Big Block in it. Uh, it's putting about 550 horsepower. It's about a mid-10-second car at the drag strip. 
course, we would never street race it. It's always at the drag strip, right? A um, lot of fun to drive. It's got 15-inch uh, wide tires in the back uh, with a 488 gear. So it's, it's more drag strip than street, but uh, we love cruising around the street. It, when we got it, it didn't have an interior. It was a race car. It didn't have an interior, things like that. So we redid all of that. John Lawson, local body shop here. Sure. Uh, John and his people painted it, stripped it and painted it, made it beautiful. It, had been, it looked a little rough from the years of racing and all that. So John and his crew went, helped me go through it, redid everything, made it beautiful. Yeah. And, and, and his wife installed the governor on the car. It doesn't go more than <laughs> 35 miles an hour. <laughs> Thanks so much. We have another person who has traveled all the way from Joliet, Illinois, to be with us today in downtown Joliet, Illinois. But she is the representative, or at least the first representative I've talked to tonight, who's from Road Trip 55th Thunderbird Club, and we'll ask her about that. But first, Norma, tell me about this pink mobile. Pink mobile. Uh, my husband bought it for me for my 50th birthday, and he's a wonderful guy. And uh, it's a 55 Thunderbird, and uh, when I originally got it, it was uh, Thunderbird Blue, which is like a teal green, sure. but there were three others in the club the same color. And I said, well, well you can't have that. can't have that. So I said, when I come down the road, I want them to know it's me. So I saw another car this color and uh, at a car show, and I asked him what the color was, and he was nice enough to tell me. And so I had it all done. And um, the car is unique because of the fair lane stripe here, the chrome stripe. Sure. And uh, Ford was supposed to make them that way, and right before production, they changed their mind. But I happened to get one of the uh, articles in a magazine, and uh, I saw it. Wow. And, yeah. And so I had it done. We'll take a closer look at that. Okay. The, uh, tell me about your club. About my club. Well, the club is originally out of Chicago. Um, there's a lot of members in New Lenox, and we mostly go eat, <laughs> but we do other car shows and events, too, where we have all of our T-Birds together. Good. It's a wonderful club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to take a close-up of, a, of a more information on this car, but, but why? Why what? Why the car? Why the car clubs? Why? <laughs> Well, I was practically raised in a garage. My mother and my father were both stock car races, racers, and they used to race at uh, Santa Fe Speedway and Mazan, and so I was raised around cars, That's so great. it's kind of in the blood. Yeah, what a great <laughs> legacy. What a wonderful heritage yeah. with that. Well, thank you. The car is fantastic. Make sure you get a close-up of the inside of the car as well because she has a special passenger in there as well. Norman, thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. So I've never seen the movie Blues Brothers. So right. which, uh, no, that's not right. <laughs> not really. Uh, well, which one are you now? Are you the short one or the, uh, the tall one? Yeah. yeah, I'm Elwood. Elwood, of course you are, because we have Elwood just a few man, clicks down the road here from us where we're at right now in Joliet, having fun. You have some special things to uh, share with us from the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. What, pray tell, would that be? So tonight we're having a car show to help raise money for the museum. And the proceeds from the show will go directly towards, uh, towards the museum. And what happens on August 31st? August 31st, we have our big Hall of Fame inductee ceremony at the Rialto. Which is right behind us, right? Yes, right behind so us. You can leave your car parked here until that. I think I it's... probably will leave it here for the yeah. next two weeks. Sure, <laughs> there you go. Thank you for all you do, for the fun, and also, what's your, now uh, we'll just whisper it so no one hears this, so you don't get in trouble, what's your real name? Elwood real, Blues. real name? Ella Blues. 
Okay. <laughs> and Elwood is on the board of directors of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. Now, I, I'm walking up and down the street, and I, and, I, and I bump into this gentleman here who I've seen at Race Fan Rally. I've seen him at Nitro Night. I've seen him at a couple of other events we've had in downtown Joe. What is your name, sir? Rocky Ossick. Rocky Ossick. Name sounds so familiar. What do you do for a living, sir? I'm retired. <laughs> Everybody works at retire that I've talked to tonight. <laughs> well, yeah, you're retired, but you've got a couple of things up your sleeve. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm still drag racing. I still love it. That's my car in behind us, sir. Solid Rock uh, Mustang, nostalgia, funny car. You know, where are you drag racing now? Well, the right. latest, latest one was at Pittsburgh, near Pittsburgh. You know, we were in Quaker City, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, nothing real close here, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, that's for sure. We need to get that thing back up I and agree. running. I don't understand why that's closed. I, I, I guess I, I sort of understand why Chicagoland is, but I don't understand why the drag strip. Anyway, that's for another show another time. So before we start this up, tell me a little bit about it. Well, it's a 1971 Mustang uh, funny car, Mach 1. It's uh, got a big block Chevy and a 540 cubic inches with an 871 blower, an Enderly uh, a bird catcher injection. It runs on methanol. Got a power glide trans two-speed transmission with a Ford 9-inch rear end. And we're going to experience that. And I wish you were here because you're going to feel it right about in here. And we're going to let you clear the area. That baby and a few little people there. Yeah, that's uh, my uh, daughter and my and wife and my grandson <laughs> and granddaughter. So, as soon as they see me getting in a car, the baby will be <laughs> oh, good. And All right. And we're going to get a, a close-up after uh, you hear what this car sounds like on the track if you were there. A couple of years ago, you could have seen this in action, either down here or out there at, uh, at the drag strip in Joliet. So, stand by. All right, you ready? Yeah. You want to come a little closer? Oh, no, I can back. You're good. Bye, Dad. We'll see how loud it is with the mic. We'll see. I might have to have you go a little bit that way, but maybe not. Well, you, I'll watch I, I, Yeah.
want to thank uh, the cameraman for putting us in this hot sun uh, to be able to enjoy this summer of 2021. I have two special people here who are survived what you just heard, uh, and they're, well, they're close enough for Austin to uh, put on a show with the funny car. And over here, I have uh, Dave. You right. Correct? Yes, sir. And over here, I have Lara. Hi. And they are the Murrays, I believe. Okay. Okay. All my research. Murray. <laughs> oh, I didn't see the arm. <laughs> uh, I, I was looking at your tag back there. So, tell me a bit about your car. Uh, it's a 1999 Pontiac Trans Am LS1 with LS6 heads on it and a stage 3 cam, 3,000 stall converter with 373 gears. Did he cover everything? Did he leave anything out? No, and it's scary fast. <laughs> but you never drive it fast no, on the streets. No, I do the speed limit all the time. Uh, you're just like the other wife I talked to a little <laughs> while ago. She put a governor on the car. It only goes 35 miles an hour, so she okay. says. Okay, yeah, right. Copy that. So, so where are you folks from? Joliet. Joliet. Yes. Right East here. Side. Yes. What side? East side. East side Joliet. Yes. Uh, it's just remarkable. Yep. And you're able to find your way downtown. Yeah. That's great. I love Joliet. Yeah. Well, it is a great town. It is. It is a great town, and it's because of people like you. Um, now, let me, this is a question that has been answered only one way. I'm going to see if he answers it a different way. And what kind of work do you do? Teamster. Active Teamster. Yes. I've had everybody's retired. I finally <laughs> found somebody who's doing work. Yeah, he works. And and you, my dear? I work for the Forge. <laughs> well, I'd be very I'm proud of, of that. I'm part of the street team of the Forge. Let me tell you something. And we have great events. They do. And and Frank does a great job. F and M yes. Entertainment. Yes. And uh, the Rialto behind us, Forge a block away. Yes. And uh, the museum soon coming up. The Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. The uh, the prison, the Collins Street Prison, and hopefully a few other places will be opening up. Great place, downtown Juliet. Now, here's the $1.1 million question. Is it because of your husband, or do you true? Is it because your significant other, or is it because you just like cars? But why car shows, and, and why? Because the camaraderie and everybody's so nice, and. There's kick-ass cars here. Can I say that? Sorry. No. There's great cars here. <laughs> and it's just a lot of fun. Everybody gets together, has good time, support the community. Absolutely. It's great. Yeah, it's great. So how many car shows do you go a week? At least one. At least one. And yeah. your favorite? Route 66. And where's that at? That's a Speedway. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They had one this year? I don't think they had it. Did they have one? We couldn't make that one. No. I thought, I, well, maybe it was, no, it couldn't have been last Back year when either. We were in, we got a trophy. Well, let's show the trophy. Can, can you see it? Yep. Okay. Okay, 2019. I knew yep. it was two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have anything last year. And not this year either, no. I guess, no, right? Not yet. No. All right, we're going to take a close up, and everything that uh, uh, they have explained to you will be very clear to you in just a second. You never know who you're going to meet here. I can't believe that the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum actually is here with a booth, with t-shirts, with all kinds of merch, and Mr. Merch himself is? Larry Williams. Larry Williams, and your young son is? Tim Seedon. Tim and Larry are both board members of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. They're here tonight to make sure this fundraiser runs well, and they've got some great um, goodies here. And uh, that, by the way, I, you know, I'm going to let you uh, share this a little bit. The museum is not totally finished. It will be by hopefully September, but I believe you can still get into the gift shop. Yes, you can. Uh, if our president or one of the other staff happens to be there at the moment, they're more than happy to bring you in, show you around, buy a t-shirt or whatever you'd like to do. Yeah. yeah. Now there's other things uh, to buy, mm -hmm. and I don't know, oh, you got some, some things here. The cups are great. We've got a couple of those. And, um, what I was going to mention also is that um, the, the gift shop is one of the areas of the museum that actually is updated, renovated, and ready for uh, folks to come in yep. and, and buy souvenirs. And they are, I don't know how many times Ron Romero was president, had to reorder because they, they are going fast, but 
Which one of you wants to talk about August 31st? Go. All right, August 31st is our Hall of Fame at the uh, Rialto Theater in downtown Joliet. And we'll be inducting uh, uh, musicians from uh, 2020 and 2021, because it had a little postponement there. It would include uh, Cheap Trick and Muddy Waters, REO Speedwagon, Chicago. Uh, we'll have live performances by a variety of acts, including uh, the Ides of March will be there, and uh, REO Speedwagon will also be performing. It's a great lineup, and it's a great night, and it's a historic night, not only for Joliet, but for all of Illinois, and actually for the whole country. This is really something special, the museum, and on August 31st, that'll be a great, great night. Uh, we'll put, I think we'll be able to put some information on, uh, and when we get it, how you can get tickets, okay? We'll do that for you uh, right after uh, we bring in the Vice President, Debbie Jo Erickson, and she's going to tell us all about the Illinois Route 66 Visitor's Guide as well. So don't go away. We're going to continue with our interviews because we have none other than the Vice President in person here of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum, Debbie Jo Erickson, and you wear not just this hat, but you have other hats you wear as well. I, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah, we're yes. going to talk about those other hats, okay. but first, I know that uh, what's near and dear to your heart is like Larry has all these t-shirts and cups and good stuff here at the uh, car show, but you have an entire gift shop waiting for folks at the museum. We do, certainly. So even now, um, because the museum is not yet open, but you can go online um, to the roadtorock.org and find our gift shop. And we have the gift, uh, we have t-shirts and we have um, books that are done by photographers that, are, that tour and follow some of the Chicago bands. And we have um, coffee, we have coffee mugs, we have keychains, we've got stickers, we've got all kinds of stuff, you know, that's a lot of fun. Now, when you say you have coffee, you're not talking about you come in and have a cup of coffee. No. You have? We have um, our own brand of coffee that's been made especially for us, and it's called Rock and Roast. <laughs> so it's as smooth as jazz. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now, your other hat that you wear, things are flying by, um, is called what? is called oh so i am the chairman of the illinois route 66 red carpet corridor which is a 90 mile um self-guided tour it's a festival that takes place the very first weekend of march and um it's loads of fun so you get start here in joliet and then drive all the way down to tawanda which is your favorite <laughs> town um, so each town produces their own little festival and there's all kinds of things going on you can start stop as often as you'd like we usually have a giveaway in all of the com different communities and it's just a nice way to kind of step back in that slow lane of um, yesteryear and really celebrate some of the things that are in some of these smaller towns that used to be thriving uh, much larger communities and now really rely on Route 66 driving through in the tourism. Yeah. Now we have several people and I, we can't name them all, we don't have the time to do it, but we got some special people on our board of directors, you of one and Ron's the other and there's a few others that I've just talked to here earlier. But we have what's called, I think we're calling them ambassadors. We're calling them ambassadors, yes. So some of those people are um, Jim Peterick from the Ides of March. We've got Bob Surratt. We've got Mitch Michaels. And just recently, and I, I'm, never mind, I'm not going to go there because I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he's a movie star. He started out as a, um, as a musician in Chicago and stumbled into um, the acting world. And it's Joe Montagna. Yes, and so he contacted us and he said, you know, I'm hearing Bob Surratt talk about the Illinois uh, Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66 and, you know, I used to be a musician in Chicago and I really would like to find out about this and really get involved and so he's a new ambassador. Uh, we've got uh, Lisa Fielding uh, from WBBM um, and just a lot of different celebrities from the Chicago area and I would be amiss if we don't lead into Richard right away, something that's going on across the street here yes. soon. So on August 31st is the rescheduled 
2020 Hall of Fame induction ceremony that was supposed to take place in March, but because of COVID got canceled, um, postponed, I should say, not canceled. So it's scheduled now for August 31st and tickets are on sale. We have confirmed performances from Ario Speedwagon, The Ides of March, uh, Jimmy Sons from Shadows of Night. Um, we've got New Colony 6, and Buddy Guy is touring, so he is unable to be there. But we have his son and daughter, who are musicians as well. They will be there to accept and perform. Um, Chicago is touring and unable to be with us, but they are going to do a videotaped acceptance. And so there's just, you know, maybe some other little surprises that we aren't quite letting out yet. <laughs> it's going to be a great night. And if you would, if you can, we'll put it on the screen. But how do people get tickets for August 31st? So they can go to our website, the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on 66, which is roadtorock.org. Or you can go to the Rialto Square Theater website and find tickets there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Debbie Joe. Thank Jo. You. Thank you. Appreciate it, as usual. We're going to continue with the El Presidente now of the museum. He's uh, all dressed up and all ready to come on camera. All right, we have the president of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum here with us, Ron Romero, and uh, we've talked to the vice president who really knows all the stuff, but we have the president here today because I wanted to do a little history lesson for those of you who are uh, watching this uh, fundraiser with the uh, great turnout that we've had here tonight, cars, and all the different car clubs that have represented here tonight. Uh, Ron Romero is founder and president of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. Ever so briefly, not the, the long history, but the brief history, if you can, of the museum. Where in the world did this come out of? Just a crazy idea I had one day. I don't know what I was thinking, really. <laughs> no, it was, you know, it's an inspiration from seeing what was happening at uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, certainly with uh, there was an exhibit in uh, Rockford from uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick that had uh, an exhibit there. Nashville was a very big inspiration for all that they do there with all their tourism. And uh, you know, I thought Joliet was the place to do it. It's uh, uh, it's hopping down here now. Things are starting to happen downtown Joliet. They are. Yeah. They are indeed. Absolutely. Yep. You got the Forge, you got the Rialto, you've got some new restaurants opening up and other uh, activities on the horizon that you're going to learn about in a little bit. We've talked about August 31st, and um, let's, well, we're only days away. As a matter of fact, when you see this show, it probably will be on the cusp of September or in September. What happens in the museum, hopefully, in the month of September, October? Lots. Uh, so right now we're still busy doing renovation of the, the building, but we have students that are actually going to start taking music lessons at the museum, um, or from the museum, I should say, uh, starting in uh, September. So we're looking forward. It's a lot of the, the area uh, grade schools in uh, Choliat, Will County area schools. Great. And on the other side of the lower level of the, of the museum, it's, there's a stage that's yeah. all set up for performance. That's ready. Yeah, that's uh, ready to go. That's going to serve a few purposes. That will be not only a place for the students to perform with a group, it'll also be a place where we could have, uh, where we could do classroom setting uh, music lessons and uh, also some performances there as well. So on the screen, and you help us with this again, uh, Debbie Joe mentioned this, but we're going to do it a couple of times because we never know who's, who's watching when they go away and they come back and whatever. How, you know, August 31st, the Hall of Fame takes place across the street here at the Rialto. How do they get tickets? How do they get involved? Well, there's a lot of information to be found at our website, roadtorock.org, and uh, that has a link to get tickets. Uh, from Ticketmaster to get to uh, the Rialto, which the ticket sales are going pretty well right now. Um, and then uh, there's other information there, how to donate, what we're doing, who's involved. We've got some great uh, ambassadors for the, from the museum involved with us. Um, all that information, our board of directors, all that can be found on our website at roadtorock.org. Ron Romero, Mr. President, good Thank to see you. Sir. Great job. Thank you. And we're going to talk to a couple of the, of the folks that are down here uh, from downtown businesses. 
we do not want to leave here without talking to these two special people. Because if we leave here, there'll be panic in the plaza. And we don't want that yet. We do want that in a couple of months. But right now I've got Phil and Tiffany from Audio Phil's first record store in Will County in downtown Joliet. And they're doing great. And I want them to do even better. So with that in mind, I'm going to take a time out here because I think there's a truck about ready to hit my camera guy. Oh, he, okay, he's backing up. <laughs> All right. It is a car show. It is so a car these show. things are to be expected. That's right. <laughs> so, Tiffany. Yes. Tell me, well, first of all, thank you for coming down. Thanks for having us. And it was a lovely night for yeah. a car show. And did you do, were you out, I think I saw you afar. Um, I couldn't get over to see you, but you looked like you were doing having fun at the Collins Street Prison. Oh, yeah. With your canopy. Yep, we had our booth out there at the Big Bash. Is that what it was? The Bash yeah. at the Big House. The Bash, Bash at the Big House. Yeah. yeah, that was hot. hot day. It was really hot. This is nice weather yeah. compared to that. It was hot. Yeah. Uh, what Did you have fun? You sell some records? Yeah, it was a great time. We sold some local music. That's what we bring out to events is our local rack, which is all bands uh, local to the area. We also have the Illinois uh, Rock and Roll Museum CD for sale on the local rack. So we did. We sold some local music, sold some uh, candles and some shirts. Had a great time. Saw some good music, too. Oh, yeah. And most of that music, by the way, is local. Most of our yeah. talent, yes. probably 85.7% oh, yeah. of all that music was local. So. Tim Plaker, being the production guy on that, did a great job, and, and the museum, of course, benefited from it. And we had a great time. We had a great time. Uh, we left Kids Fest, yep. and then we went down to the Big Bash at the, what did you call that, Big Bash way? The Bash at the Big House. See, bash that's, at that's the, bash what, the Big House. That's, why, the big that's house. why she talks. <laughs> so why didn't the world, did you start this record store? Uh, when was it, 2018? 2018. 2018. 2018. Um, the answer has always been the same, Rich, is we started the record store just out of passion. Um, it was never meant to be a money grab. It was just meant to kind of clear our house up of clutter and, uh, you know, follow the dreams with our hobby. You know, we've always been believers. If you want to do something, you got to go out and get it. You got to do it. Um, and there's never a good time to start your own business. Just do it. And somehow, here we are. You here did are, it. You did it. Now, let's get, get your GPSs out here. And what's the address? It is 17 East Van Buren Street, one door east of the Rialto Square Theater. Now, I know that it, probably by the time you see this, some of the challenges that Tiffany and Phil are going through right now will be over with. But right now, in the beginning of the week that you're going to be watching this, it's back to school. It is. It and is so back to school. some different hours. We are going to be goofy hours for a little bit until we figure out where everyone's going to be. Yeah, so hopefully by the end of this week we'll know. All right. <laughs> and you need to stop by and visit them. They're in the big Rialto building complex on Van Buren. You can't miss it. Park right here when the cars are gone, and you'll have a great time. Yep. Just spend some time in there, you know. That's it. And, um, you know, I think I'm going to talk to Diane Harris next. And then we're going to travel on and I'll talk to the president of the museum and then we'll say c'est la vie. So one more interview coming up. Okay, I've saved the, the last for best. My good friend Diane Harris is with us and she's the owner of It Is Amazing Store in downtown Joliet. And Diane, in 60 seconds, your elevator speech, what kind of a store is it? Okay, thank you, Richard. Okay, It Is Amazing is a ladies boutique on uh, downtown Joliet. We focus on upscale clothing at affordable costs for men, women, and children. How's and that? It's a fabulous <laughs> shop, it really is. And you've defied the odds. You're down with retail, brick and mortar, and steps away from the new courthouse, steps yep. away from businesses that are now coming into downtown Joliet, and more apartments are being rented out, more apartments are being built, and uh, things are happening in downtown Julia. Yep. Uh, your hours? Uh, we're open on Monday from 12 to 5, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 to 6. And I want to mention this too as well. It's not just a women's dress casual, snappy casual shop, because they do have things for the men there as well. Uh, I did a little Christmas shopping for my wife earlier mm -hmm. or last year, 
Yeah, that was last year, I guess. Yeah, that was and I probably need to get back in there soon. <laughs> and uh, we invite you to do the same thing. To come on down for restaurants, for entertainment, and for great shopping. It is amazing. And thank you so much. And thank you. And I would like to give you a pair of socks. These are from uh, It Is Amazing. And it's our novelty socks that we sell a lot of. So we want you to have it, Richard, uh, to represent Route 66. Huh? Thank you. It says Route 66 on there. And um, I'm going to wear these socks tomorrow at work. So there, get ready. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm with the El Presidente one more time, and we're going to sign off here. We thank you for watching. Tell your friends and neighbors and uncles and aunts, and especially Uncle Ed, uh, to watch us on YouTube as well as on Channel 6. And as a farewell message, not farewell, it's a, it's a fairly well message from the president personally to you about the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum and how you can get involved. Please visit the roadtorock.org website. Uh, you can become a charter member there. You can donate. You can find out all the good things that we're doing down at the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. And we encourage everybody to even give us a call, and we'll give them a tour of what we're doing at the museum. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much. Thank you.